This is the Rope Masters Video Cast, your source for the best in rope skipping instruction. Hosted by world champion Peter Nessler. Welcome to the premiere of the Rope Masters Video Cast. Each episode is going to be featuring two skills. Now, I've done this for a few different reasons, the main one being there are so many different skill levels of people that watch various Rope Masters videos and products. I want to make sure no matter where you are on the skill level spectrum, you're able to learn something from these video casts. And the way we've done this is we're going to break it up into a JV and a varsity section. The JV skill is going to be geared towards those that are either just beginning to jump, you've been jumping a little while, or maybe you're just, you do it for a workout and you're looking to add something to your workouts that doesn't take a lot of difficulty but can give you some different variety. So that's what the JV skill will be. The varsity skill is going to be geared towards those that have been jumping a while, and you're looking for something that's going to challenge you and help you to increase your skill level. Now, we're going to be having a lot of different people featured in these video casts in the future. We're going to be covering just about every aspect of rope skipping. We'll be doing stuff in single rope, double dutch, Chinese wheel, long rope, partner jumping. There'll be so many different things that we cover that you're no matter what you're, you're looking to learn, we're going to be able to cover that at some point with these video casts. The JV skill. Crisscross is one of the most used skills in rope skipping once you get beyond the basic jump. Now to do the crisscross, you'll want to start with the ropes behind your back. You're going to drop your arms by your side. You're going to want to pull the rope out in front of you. Now you do this mainly because you want to have a good motion with the rope while you're jumping. If you start with your hands up high or in various other locations, you're not going to have a very good rotation of the rope while you're doing this trick. So you want to make sure that you have your hands down by your side, arms out in front. Now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to bring your arms down, around, and over your head. Now to do the crisscross, you're going to want to cross your arms right here. Now the goal here is to cross your arms as wide as you can. If you cross in a very small loop, you're going to have a very small loop to jump through. If you cross with a very large loop, you'll have a much larger loop to jump through. Now, looking at the two of these, I would rather try to jump through the big one. So you want to make sure you cross as big as you can. A good way to just to tell that is try to touch your elbows together when you cross. So start with the ropes behind you, arms dropped, arms out in front. You're going to swing it over and cross and try to catch it under your toes. Now, once you're able to catch it under your toes, you're going to want to try to add a jump. So you're going to come over, cross, Try to jump through the loop, and the rope should automatically just go over you if you have a good motion with the rope. So once again, we'll, we'll do that with just one jump. Rope behind, arms out in front, go around, cross, and the rope will go over you again. Now from here, there's a couple different things that you can do. Either First of all, you can either continue jumping in a crisscross, you can come out, or you can come out and then go back into a cross again. Now we'll do the first one where you just stay in a cross. When you come over, cross, and just continue jumping across. Once you've got that, you can go over, cross, bring your arms apart, and jump through the rope there. That's what you'll normally do with a crisscross. You just want to make sure when you're jumping through the loop, as soon as you jump over it, start bringing your arms back out so that you can jump in a regular jump afterwards. So at full speed, that'll look cross out with that. And then this third thing that I've mentioned is going from a cross back into a cross. Now, usually anytime you're learning a skill in rope skipping, you'd want to do everything on one side as well as the other. So if I'm doing it with my right hand on top, I also want to be able to crisscross with my left hand on top. So what you'll do is you want to practice doing both of those from a starting point here, where you come over one with your right hand on top, and then another one where you jump with your left hand on top. And once you've got those both pretty consistently, you want to try doing them back and forth between them. So you go across with the right arm, across with the left arm. And you should be able to go nice and easy between these. And like I said, remember to cross rather large. Once you get a little bit better at it, you can usually minimize that a little bit. So I usually touch my forearms together once I've got it pretty good. And you should be able to just cross on forever. And from there, there's a lot of different things that you can learn out of crisscrosses. You could add side swings. You go behind your back. And we'll be covering, covering some of the more of those in the future. But that is your basic crisscross. Varsity skill. Varsity skill, we'll be doing a backward double under reverse EV Mamba. Sounds a little weird. I don't really know what else to call it. So that's what it will be. Now, to do this, we're going to be starting off with a 
half of a turn, a backward double under crisscross, a backward side swing double under crisscross, then you'll be doing a reverse mamba double under landing in an EV. Sounds a little complicated, let's break it down. You're going to start off forward. The first part we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a half of a turn into a crisscross. So you're going to just start off forward, just turn, and just do a backward double under crisscross. Nice and easy. Once you've got that down, you're going to go into a, another backward side swing double under crisscross. Now one thing to notice here is if I'm turning to my left, I want to bring my right arm on bottom to make this work properly. And vice versa, if I was turning to my right, I would bring my left arm on bottom. So you want to make sure that you're kind of watching that when you're doing this. So if I'm turning to my left, I'm bring my right arm on bottom, do my first cross here. Then I'm going to do a side swing backward double under crisscross here. And then from here, this is where I'm going to go into the reverse mamba. Now, just to walk through it, I'll do a side swing crisscross right here. Just in that short little motion, I'm in a position already to do the reverse mamba. So I'm going to be here. As soon as that handle touches my wrist, I'm going to go ahead and do the rope release, which when it comes over, catch it, and I'm going to catch just the rope like this. Now from here, you want to make sure that you're landing in an EB. So when it comes over, it comes around, catch, land with your right arm behind your back if you're holding the hand with your right hand or the rope with your right hand. So whatever rope has got the handle in it, that's the arm that's going to go behind your back. So when it comes around, I release, catch, and land with that arm behind my back. Now just to walk through this, I'm going to go ahead and just start with the backwards. I did my turn here, backward, sides and crisscross, reverse mamba, catch, land in an EB. Now it's important that you do this skill on the ground a number of times before you do it in double unders, otherwise you're going to have the unfortunate situation of whacking yourself really badly with the rope. Done it many times, don't um, recommend it. So, just make sure that you just, when you release the rope, come around, land with that arm behind your back. So you're going to go swing around, catch, and you're there. Now once you've got that on the ground nice and easy, try to make sure that you're catching either a handle or very near the handle. I, have a, I always have a knot in my rope, had it ever since I was a little kid, I'm used to it. I usually catch the rope where the knot is, and it's very close to my handle so I'm able to catch it and slide directly back out to the handle. And most of the time, people will never even notice that I'm not actually catching the handle. I'm usually catching the knot, but it allows me something to grab. So if you don't need that, don't worry about it. You know, I can do them without it. I just, I've always had it. I like it. So once you've got it on the ground, you're going to start doing it with the double unders. Remember the turn, turn, and try to catch it. It is kind of a hard trick to make. Sometimes I miss every once in a while. So we'll try that again. I'm just going to start backwards this time. I'm going to go here and catch, and then turn. Now you'll notice I take just a tiny bit of a pause before I go into that rope release. That helps me to make sure that the handle's in the right position when I release it. If you release it too early, it makes the skill very difficult to do. If you release it too late, it's not going to really spin properly. So sometimes it's good to just take just a little bit of a pause, allow you that time to get ready for that rope release. So all together, I'm going to go from here. Try it one more time. Go from here. And catch. And back around. Now there's a lot of variations that you can do on this. If you can do it behind the back, you can land with a cross. Um, you can do it into a backward TJ. There's a lot of things that you can do with this reverse mamba into. The EB I find is a very kind of a fun one. Looks cool and allows a little bit of motion while you're going. So one more time. Start forward, turn cross, rope release, around, and back out. And that is the backward double under reverse EB mamba. For more information, check out www.jumprm.com.